Good morning, YouTube world. I'm your host, Paul Italia. We got a special guest on today. He's got a big match coming up at the next East vs. West going down in May. I call it the Battle of the Biceps. <laughs> RVJ, welcome to uh, to my podcast. How you doing today, brother? Good. I'm good. You know, chilling out, hanging. So I see you got a big match coming up against Zurup. And, uh, you know, the first thing I thought about was, holy shit, man, that is literally the battle of the biceps. You guys got mountains as biceps and all. But before we uh, get into that match, I just want to break into a little controversy that I seen online in one of the groups and all. And I want to just kind of clear things up. Uh, somebody was saying that uh, you came on my podcast and uh, you said that you were using steroids in the past. And, uh, you know, I, I did go re-listen to it and, you know, it did get a little confusing at the, the wording you used. And also rather than uh, speculate or whatever, I'm just going to straight up ask you, um, have you did steroids ever in your life before? No, no. And, you know, yeah, looking back on it, I can understand what was uh, like misconstrued there when I said I got on steroids once in my life. And, you know, I explained it in that little thread. But what it is, is because of the Ryan Bowen match, people, you know, I had a steroid stipulation with Ryan Bowen because at the time he was pissing me off and I had my opinions on why he was so loud and proud and making all those gains. So I, you know, pushed to have a tested event more so to break his balls and to, you know, just shut down some of that overconfidence. Uh, I know that steroids are prevalent in the sport, and I know that I've taken many matches. A lot of new guys don't know that, that I've taken a shit ton of matches for 20 years with guys that I didn't ask to be tested. So when I said I got on steroids once, meaning I explained it like getting on your kids about cleaning their room. Like, I'm going to get on this kid about cleaning his room today. It doesn't mean you're going to sit on them. It doesn't mean you're going to put them in an arm bar. It doesn't mean you're going to actually physically get on them. It means you're going to, you know, get on their ass. And for me, it was like I got on that steroid tangent one time legitimately like i have my opinions about them where they're on the sport i'm open about that but getting on that meant i got on that tangent and made it as a stipulation for a match i haven't made that as a stipulation for any of the other matches because that was in a response to me caring if leonidas was on peds and what he weighed i said no i got on steroids once and with fast talk I, it was getting on the tangent so no mis uh, miscommunication uh, when you're talking fast and ad libbing on these types of things and just doing it off the cuff, it's easy to just rip things out there and eliminate words that people could kind of like fill their own narrative in. Yeah, what I was going to say is uh, that day I didn't take that at all. You know, um, that's why when he said that, you know, I clarified and said the thing that I took from the whole interview was that you were open to maybe in the future if it was uh, monetarily um right for that situation that you would be open to possibly trying TRT or something like that. And that's what I took from the whole interview. When I did go back and listen to it, I, I definitely did see where it, it could have got a little confusing in somebody else's eye. So I just wanted to, to clarify that. And then uh, the other thing is what would it take, um, you know, what kind of match, you know, how much money would have to be on the line for you to uh, possibly think about going that TRT route? All right. First of all, I think TRT wouldn't do shit. I think when you're comparing to what other people are doing in reality, if we're, you know, being adults here and educated, um, TRT is like you might as well just do creatine and protein compared to what these guys are doing. I think that there's a lot of people out there that say they're on TRT, but their levels are like five times higher than, you know, a horny ass 17 year old kid. Um, so I think it's a real good, uh, loophole and scapegoat for people to have high levels, but we all know what the game is for me to do it. Um, it would have to be more than arm wrestling, to be honest with you. It wouldn't be for a win. Um, I know there's per perfectly healthy guys out there that are doing it for the win, for the glory, for the pats on the back. I, I wouldn't, it would have to be something that would affect my quality of life, uh, severely and for health reasons. Um, because money is spent. And if it was money driven, it would have to be real money because even like 10, 20 grand, I mean, you go and, uh, fix up your vehicle and go on a, uh, put that deck on your house and go on a vacation with your kids. That shit's gone. That doesn't even get you through a year. You make 20 grand a year, you're fucking poverty level and what you're running and gunning and ending up with, you know, all this, you're always chasing too. My stance with the steroids is even if you did it, 
you're always going to chase it like bodybuilding. You know, if, if people start off with doing X amount, say, we'll just throw a number out there, like a thousand milligrams of this. And this guy was ahead of you. And then you catch him. Well, he's going to now switch it to 1500 and then add something in there. And then you go. And then it's always the chase for who can do the most and tolerate the most. So for me, no, I figured out that aside from bitching about it, I think the true unicorn in the sport is in my time, I can't think of somebody or a very, 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 very long time that got to the very, very top of the sport in any category that was a true lifetime natty. And, and that's that's my vantage point. So while I might not be able to get to be Levon and gain 200 pounds and be the open category champion, I think it's more notable. There are a lot of people who get to Levon's level if they're willing to do what he did. But to be a true natty and get to the top of the world and be universally recognized in any weight class, I don't think it's something I've ever seen or we've seen in a very, very, very long time. Like maybe when John Brzezink was a true 200 pounder back in the, the 90s. But <clears throat> Rob, I got to say one thing. This is my theory with it. Um, I think a lot of the top guys, I think they're actually making a mistake by taking extra steroids. Um, it's not like bodybuilding. It, it, we're not we're not trying to build our bodies like that. And what actually you're doing when you're taking, you know, more tests than, you know, TRT is you're increasing your blood flow, which we all know is probably the worst thing you could do on the table. It's like taking a pre-workout right before you go and you pull. You're going to pump out so much quicker. So I actually think that a lot of these guys that are are taking that much, I think they're actually lowering their performance levels. You know, and, and I'm speaking, you know, I'm not on no crazy elite level of arm wrestling or anything that, but I came in from bodybuilding and, you know, we did what we did to uh, maintain our bodies then. And uh, when I first got in, I felt like it was working against me. And, uh, you know, I'm actually on TRT and I've seen so much better results on the table. I feel much better. I could pull for three, four hours. And, uh, you know, so I actually am the opposite thinking of that. You know, and I've been telling a lot of people that, you know, and uh, I feel like when these guys get these big super matches, you know, I'm not going to name names, but I know a lot of the top level guys and you know, I know what they were doing. And um, I actually think they kind of screwed themselves in a way, you know, so that's just my my whole theory out there. I could be completely wrong, but I, I've experimented for myself and that's what I have seen on my body. Yeah, I mean, that's I'd say that's valid. But when you take athletes that are already uh, understanding of the game you, and you add 20, 30 percent strength, they don't necessarily need uh, a lot of endurance when you have that level of power. You know, they trade off the other faculties for uh, extreme power because then they can end matches quick, which is why for years and years and years, we did not have, see Levon have to be athletic. He did not have to have worries about blood flow and blood pressure in his heart or anything like that because he was so overwhelming that nobody really survived a second. And because of that, he didn't have to call on any of those other athletic uh, parts that make you an athlete, like your conditioning and all that stuff. And a lot of guys are doing this. There's a reason why when I got in the sport, the best open head category guys were like John, Ron, Alexi Bavoda was bigger, Travis was bigger, but these guys were, you know, like 260, 270, 280. John and Ron were 220, 230. But now today's heavyweight in the top 10, they're all over 300. You know, and Gennady's over 300. Devin probably gets in one of his matches up in the 280s. Michael Todd, 300. You know, Corey West, uh, Arif, fucking Levan. You know, how many guys you want that are over 300 Ermi's now up 300 so it's like it's just a whole different game it's like talking ronnie coleman and, and uh you know frank zane it's just a different game it's a different story and you can make up for a lot of lack in technical prowess just by being stronger we see it all the time there are guys that aren't as strong and they're technically savvy and then you get a guy who's a fucking gorilla and he's just super strong and he can just mule people you can make up ground. The higher you gain in strength and power, you can. You don't need as much technical savvy, and that's kind of the direction it's gone. And a lot of those steroids will give you. They might take away from another area, granted, but they will give you that 
top end power and mass. So, so you're a hundred percent right with that. And uh, when you're saying that, what I'm thinking, you know, just throwing it out there for these top athletes that are going the juice way or, you know, pancakes, whatever you want to call them, you know, it might be something to, you know, do that high amounts that they're doing until, you know, maybe two, three weeks out and then, you know, drop down to TRT and, you know, save yourself with the endurance and, and the pump factor, because you're not going to lose any strength in two to three weeks and uh, your levels ain't going to dip that much, but you will be able to have a lot longer endurance because you're not going to be so pumped out. And anybody that hasn't did steroids before, what I can tell you as an experiment for yourself to understand what I'm talking about is go take a pre-workout and go take Viagra or Cialis right before you go on the table and then go see how you feel and, and see how you do <laughs> on that table. And you will find out real quick what I'm talking about. Uh, moving on, brother, I want to bring up uh, this big match. And, uh, you know, I got to see a picture the other day of uh, you and uh, Jerry standing together, and I couldn't get over what you look like, brother. That biceps are just looking insane. You got mountains. And, uh, you know, first thing I think about when I, uh, I think of biceps and arm wrestling is Zurup. So I think this is like the perfect match. You know, I'm very excited about this. I remember when I met Zurup in person, you know, you could tell online when, uh, you know, he's doing all these crazy uh, lifts and all. Dude's got humongous arms. But when you actually see him in person, it's crazy. You know, the dude's only like, you know, I think he's like 5'8". And I mean, he's he's sporting 20-inch guns, definitely. But um, what do you expect that day, bro? And what is your training looking like? Because obviously you've been doing a lot of training. You are looking focused. Focused. I mean, I'm just going by your, your appearance and everything. You look like you're back. So what does your training look like these days that look like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely uh, hungry. And, you know, since the last time we talked, I told you that I was cleaning up the act and taking up, taking uh, uh, training more seriously. And, you know, I was going to kick the booze and focus on my nutrition. And so far, I've been running with that. You know, I've been, I've stayed clean and focused on eating good I'd say probably about 80 to 90 percent of the time I'm you know I don't feel like I get enough calories in if I try to eat all clean it's hard to just and it gets mundane so I break out there and I'm not a bodybuilder but with the the lack of drinking so much you know the uh, the weight comes off I've started to whittle down and you know kind of like my composition's getting better and uh, I train when I can um, you know sometimes recovery is not as fast as I'd like it to be. I don't, you know, I try to listen to my body. So I'm trying to do a little bit of overall body work for conditioning and strength while maintaining the objective that I'm an arm wrestler. I'm not a, I'm not a physique model. I'm not going to, I'm not trying to get on stage because it's easy to get uh, distracted and, you know, oh, I'd like to have more bulbous shoulders and traps. But in the time I'm doing that, there's a, there's a line of like shoulder mobility and health that's good for arm wrestling. And then you start getting away from how you look on the beach instead of doing something that's going to help you in six weeks, you know, and it's, it's hard to be great at two different things at the same time. So I'm really taking advantage as much as I can. I'm trying to make years up of uh, being dormant in a couple months against this guy, but I could say I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing what I can do. I'm not sleeping on the couch or getting fucking hammered and then saying I, I did what I could do. I'm actually trying. And, you know, training with Jerry was was eye opening because he's got a great group there and being able to have a guy that I can, you know, really torque out with and really put me in the situations that Zarab will. And but at a bigger, stronger body, I can't be, you know, Jerry is a bigger, stronger Zarab. His shoulder press is stronger than Zarab's. His arm is stronger than Zarab's. And that's not a knock on Zarab. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. The guy's a fucking monster. So if I can get consistently pushed by a guy like him, I don't think I'm going to feel anything from Zarab that's going to, you know, it's like these fucking guys who come from third world countries and they see death all around them and bodies in the street. And then they come here and they, they join a little fuck around gang. And these guys think they're hard. They're like, you don't know fucking hard. Like that shit doesn't scare me. I grew up with that. So Jerry's like that third world country for me. And, Zarab, if I train with Jerry, Zarab's like the little pea shooter gangbanger. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, that's the way I can explain it. But I've made it since that point. Like, I'm going to seek out training with Jerry as often as I can, even post match with Zarab, because that kind of multi directional power 
will bring you up to speed on the world elite level real fast. Rob, how many uh, days a week are you lifting? And is it, is it, are we just doing general lifts or are we doing table Pacific training? All right. So before I went to this practice, um, I got to be careful because I don't want to show up to practice too banged up because for me, I feel like it hurts a lot of my, uh, how my body wants to move and build that repetition and, you know, kind of how my body and hips and everything move. And if, if I'm too fatigued and tired, um, you start pulling sloppy and then that becomes a habit. So I trained real specific stuff a couple of days before I went down there to train with Jerry and I didn't feel terrible, but I didn't feel great. Like my wrist and hand got real tired real quick, which never happens. So, um, I was doing like a day or two of really hard specific table stuff at my house. And then a week of training, uh, on a table, a day of training on the table, but that was with guys who weren't as powerful. So I might switch it down to really hard training with Jerry and then doing some specific stuff, but not at that max level. So I'm trying to get like, I'm happy if I do a good day on the table and three days of specific stuff. But I mean, I try to do like the chest, the shoulder health. I, I love triceps. I think they're really good for your elbow, hand and wrist. I could train almost every day, every other day, no problem. Um, and anything I do more than like three days of like gym workout, and table i'm real happy with um what do you do for your hand and wrist do you want to share that at all or you want to keep that yeah constantly? yeah i have a i have a new gripper that i bought that i love because the way it fits in your hand it doesn't close like this it closes completely flat like this so okay. it changes the ergonomics of your hand to be able to squeeze with your top knuckle too and it's 100 percent adjustable on the pressure so you're basically getting like 20 grippers in one you can go high reps or you can go really like hard reps um you can adjust the, the 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 distance too so if you want it small and you want to crunch it just like that or if you want to really sweep it out and just the way the handles feel on my hand it feels good on my fingers i do a lot of thick handle work like i got a double thick handle when i do my rows um everything i do i try to use any kind of pulling or curling or anything i try to use my hands and wrists because what's good is all that pulling strength if when you pull you flatten out and bend your own wrist so you can really get a hand and wrist workout just with doing some of your back moves or pulling moves with the containment. And I got another handle I just built. It's over here somewhere. But like I got a flat handle that I like to focus on my fingertips and like push down from my fingertips. I mean, I do a lot of basic stuff you see on the internet, but I'd say that I'm, uh, I try to do them in a more diligently focused and I really try to mimic how I grab someone and I don't get too caught up with, uh, people's numbers because it's easy to do that but i like to do things that are feel like i feel on a table and be really diligent with as if i was getting a ref grip close my hand and then pull you know and i just really mimic those lanes as much as i can and i just keep it fresh have you ever thought of using a racquetball you know like as we're talking right now i, I will walk around and all day long i'm just squeezing this and i'm squeezing my thumb you know yeah and i love it yeah, that's something that you, you can see. You can put your thumb in there and go on like this, or you could just grab it on those fingers. I remember a guy, um, I think Christian Binney said years back that Jason Vale used to just squeeze a water bottle like this. And it's funny, but once the water bottle squishes, it kind of fits into your hand right at that sweet spot. And then if you just tr almost like you try to pop it, it's amazing what squeezing something that doesn't give will do for you as well. That's funny you said that because when I went to uh, first three months into arm wrestling, I went and uh, trained with Christian. You know, he lives right near my uh, Florida place. And uh, that was the first thing he did to me. He, he took a water bottle, he emptied it out, and it to me, and he goes, go start walking around with this everywhere. I was like, are you serious right now? I thought he was like like teasing me or whatever. But uh, yeah, and no, I started doing it. But uh, I actually found like the racquetball, I just, it's more comfortable. You know, I just, you know, you could get different parts of the, the fingers, you know, been really concentrating on that thumb because we know, you know, Devin's got everybody now concentrating on thumb training and all. Do you do anything specific for uh, thumb uh, training? Actually, yeah. Well, because of what I used to do with um, construction, uh, I used to run tin snips a lot and do a lot of things that I had to squeeze like this a lot and sheet metal and stuff like that. Like I did a lot of sheet metal work. So I was always squeezing like this. So my thumb pad on my right hand is pretty thick, but because I'm not doing construction anymore, I'm a fucking donut guy. Um, I got that, that grip where I said that I dialed down. What I do is, um, if I dial it down to being really low weight, 
because you can only put so much stuff in your thumb. And then I close it and I'll just sit there, hold like a pair of scissors and just go like this. And also for me, coming from a grip background, I think pinch gripping, people highly underrate how good that is for overall hand health and thumb. Like when you got a pinch like this, that's almost mimicking like that flat hand. You feel it all up in the back of your hand and wrist here. And then the thumb, if it's limited, it has to catch up just to even hold. You could take flat plates, doesn't matter if they're tens, twenties, whatever you can carry and just hold them and farmers walk them and try to load up more weight. But that pinch grip, that flat handed like health like this is really good. And I'll give you one more cookie. I'll show you this. I like to show people some of my secrets, but I just picked this up, this thing. I don't know if you get online and surf for cool gadgets, but this fucking thing right here, do you see it? Oh uh, yeah. You've seen this thing? Yes, I have. Yeah. It's got, it's a threaded rod and these are two springs. So you could take different springs out to say uh, how much pressure you want, okay. but you twist it like this, like as if you were wringing a towel and the yeah. closer it gets, the harder it is to twist. And then you can untwist it backwards. So you get the forward like this, the reverse like this. And, you know, I'll have my daughter use it because different springs, they'll tell you if you put the two together, it's this much poundage to squeeze it together, the little spring. But this for, for strength and hand health, I mean, you could do two sets of this and it will destroy you. It, I love this thing. I fuck with this thing all the time now lately because it's something you can just put some of the workouts are the ones that you can do the easiest, like a gripper. You can sit down on your couch and just fuck with it. So you could do that all day. You can get that volume. That's why mechanics and contractors are so strong. They're just doing shit all day. Oh, well, you could do this and sitting down. You could just fucking be cranking on this thing. You know what I mean? Crank it backwards. And a lot of us don't get enough of this backwards work. It just ends up with like, I've even been guilty of it. You know, tennis elbows and all that shit. So look it up. Where do you get it on Amazon? I got that on Amazon. Yeah. And it was surprisingly cheap. I mean, I just been hunting for cool gadgets that I can do while I'm like watching my daughter and I'll just go like this. And if it, if it helps me 1%, sometimes the difference between freezing up a match, losing a match and killing a match could be one or 2%. When we get off, I got something to show you. I got, uh, I got one too that, uh, you know, I don't have it here, but I'll go grab it and show you what that is for the wrist and really good for the fingers as well. I know what it is. It's that little circle thing. You roll up like this, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There's not many things that slip under the cracks with me in the grip world. I've a few things I found lately I was happy with, but not many yeah. things I, I haven't seen. What do you do for your biceps? Uh, Cause I mean, you got some crazy biceps. Um, you know, it was just, I would say standard stuff, but I, I think, I, I think I've always trained my biceps like a bodybuilder and people laugh at that in the arm wrestling world. But I think there was something to be said about, I've never injured my bicep, never had a pull tendon, never injured it. And I had an argument with the guy, not an argument. We'll say a friendly debate was a guy that was a friend of mine in Connecticut. And he believed that that was stupid. The training full range is stupid because you only want to be static. But my theory was, what happens if you're in a match and you need to get out of that range of motion uh, or, or you just get pulled open a little bit? Your, your body, you know, where your bicep connects all the way up through your shoulders and stuff, it, there's a lot more to biceps than just a bicep. It, the way it connects up into your shoulders and elbows and it's a stabilizer. And um, when you get out of that, static is great for a certain angle. But when you get out of that 5% range of motion, now it's in foreign territory. It's not trained for that. It's not trained to be elongated and stretched open. And I said, I think you're asking for, besides having lacking strength in other areas, you're, you're asking for injury. And shortly after that conversation, you know, as luck would have it, he tore his bicep off the, you know, he tore his bicep off. But I just think that when you get into training and you can do specific isometrics, I'm all about that. But I do think like elongating it and really doing like, Easy bar curls. I love concentration curls. They suck. Concentration curls suck my ass. You know why? Because I sit down with 25s and they make me feel weak. I want to see, you see these guys out there doing strap over the hand lifts straight up in the air and they're doing 200 kilograms, 9 million kilograms. So it makes me feel fucking weak. But at the end of the day, if you're stimulating and working, I, I do think there is a lot of validity, even in the strength world for bodybuilder type training and really targeting a muscle to be stronger like that and i like i always say dennis like was a world curl record holder you know he did curls for the girls all fucking day and there's a reason that people had a hard time opening that dude's arm up because that connection that goes like this if your bicep is strong enough you could lose your hand and everything and you could hold that angle you know and he's done it 
Um, yeah, so I, let me I'm ask a big you curl the, person. So the majority of it is you're just doing full range of motion curls. Now, give me a percentage. How much of the, how much of the training of your biceps is the full range, and then how much is static holds? I'd say right now it's probably about 50-50. Okay. And I like I like to vary my rows so they turn into a bicep exercise as opposed to a back. So if I'm doing back and I want to like roll into like my belly button or like right below like my uh, sternum here, I want to row it. I got a handle that I'll, that's closer like this. And I'll, I'll start and almost instead of backing it, I'll like pull it into my chest. And then you end up inevitably in this angle and it's almost like a hard – like dragging curl that really overloads it because they say for biceps like chin-ups and things like that are some of your best like growers of biceps like underhand chin-ups and pulls like with a supinated grip so if i can do that and then just like pull it in um so yeah i'd, I'd say for like certain things like arm wrestling move I, i'll do like 50 50 okay well, I want to introduce today, we got uh, Big Daddy, Jerry Catteret, has just stepped into the room. What's up, Jerry? How you doing, big guy? What's up? So uh, I, I heard the, the house is decorated for uh, St. Paddy's Day over there. Yeah, we're out right now, too. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. You weren't playing, brother. Leprechauns came when you were sleeping and uh, decorated, I could see. So um, what I wanted to first talk about is... Uh, when I had uh, John, uh, Devin, and Jerry on, um, RBJ, we were talking about you in a possible match against Larry Wheels. What would you think of that? Left hand or right hand? Um, I believe they said it was right hand. John would like to see you pull uh, Larry Wheels' right hand. Because we, I was asking everybody, um, who would you like to see Larry Wheels pull next? And, you know, we were just talking about how Larry Wheels possibly could be the gatekeeper to the top 10 in North America. And uh, John said that he would like to see RBJ first. You know, he thinks that would be a really good, strong match for him. What do you think about that match? I mean, yeah, that sounds that sounds good. I'm in a place where um, I'm, instead of having a real lofty way of selling why I think I could beat a guy and why I might be better than a guy. I'll just take the matches as they come and ball up and do it. You know, it's a, hey, if somebody's putting my name in there, they think I'm worthy for a match or vice versa. Who am I to say that Larry's not worthy to pull me? How do we ever get rising stars if no one gives them a challenge? And how do I ever prove my worth and validity if I don't rise to those said challenges? You know, once you become king, if you hide behind your high walls, you don't get a lot of respect. So um, I would I would absolutely be open to pulling it. I, I know he's progressed a lot and he's a student. He's clearly got a great base of strength. So, I mean, I've had a lot of vocal opinions about, you know, ooh, I've hated the elitist standpoint, but as a protective mechanism, I've kind of taken it at different ventures in time, admittedly. So, I mean, I'm just open to whatever. If the guy at the pub down the road wants to arm wrestle, I'll let him feel it. If Larry Wheels wants to arm wrestle, have at it. If LeVon wants to get a crack at it, fuck him too. <laughs> I love it, bro. Love the confidence. And uh, hey, guys, if you haven't already, please uh, click that subscribe button. I'm almost at that 10K mat, uh, 10K subscribers. I'm uh, set a goal and I really want to hit it. So if you guys can, please just click that uh, button. And then uh, the other thing I just wanted to update everybody on is I got my show that goes on every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And it's called the Arm Wrestling Buzz. We started off last week, uh, had an amazing turnout, had a great panel of people. We had uh, Austin Jaggers on there. We had a couple of guys coming uh, as doing super matches at my next event going down April 1st in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Me and Cobra Rhodes teamed up and we're throwing a big huge event for the east versus west qualifier if you guys uh can't make that one in person make sure to check out my youtube uh youtube channel we'll be going live on there it's completely free giving back to you.